one of the grown children. Uh, uh, Nilus traced his ancestry back 10 generations to the 1700s. His patriot ancestor for whom he was inducted into the Sons of the American Revolution was Amabla. A Amabla. Amabla. Amabla Bertram, who was a corporal in the Galvez expedition. Is that the post is Alpusas? Neil has written and published 10 books and has published an additional 17 books for others with the help of his son, Jeremy. His books are Cooking, History, World War II Photographs, Spiritual Life, and Bible-related topics. His latest book is Grandpa's Old Photos, including his family tree back to the 1700s. And he also has brought a few books here that are available to buy or get on Amazon. So without any further further ado, I'm going to bring up Mr. Neil Perchman. I don't want to pass it over. Whatever makes it look better. Pardon me? We can see it pretty good this way. Okay. okay. All right, can y'all hear me? Yes, yes. All right. So, uh, like Mark said, this is uh, book number 10. And the way this came about is I was fortunate enough that my ancestors, my dad, my grandparents, great grandparents, they didn't throw away any photos. They passed them on down to generation to generation when, when they passed away. And so I ended up with at least 2,000 photos. Uh, 800 of those were put in a book that I did in 2014 called Dad's War Photos. My dad went to the South Pacific in World War II and took pictures wherever he went. And uh, that's available on, on Amazon also. And so I ended up with hundreds of photos that my mom and dad passed on to me. So these are all my dad's, from my dad's side of the family. And you talk about, I don't know, you, I guess you can call it a mess when you have a whole bunch of photos um, and you need to uh, Photoshop them, edit them, put them in order, uh, find any kind of documentation that you can, or for me it was mostly from my memory of what my uh, mom and dad and grandparents, my grandmother told me. And uh, so it was, a, it was a good experience. It took me three years to put all this together. Uh, so let me uh, get started with the slides. So as it says on the bottom, uh, I have a website, uh, neilbertrand.com. If you go there, uh, you can click. There's a link you can click there to go to um, all of my books on Amazon. There's also a link to click to go to my dad's uh, oil paintings. He was a, uh, a wonderful Louisiana, wonderful artist of Louisiana landscapes. Forms, formscapes, bayouscapes, and flowers. All right, so <clears throat> this this is my, this is the actual photograph of my grandfather, my dad's father, and his first wife, Lydia Lafleur, and she was the daughter of Dr. Erdemont Lafleur from Lautel. And this is a close-up, and if you can see his hairdo, <laughs> that's the reason I picked this photo. I have never in my life seen a hairdo like that. 
And so I thought it would attract attention if you would see that on the book cover and uh, pick up the book. So here are some surnames of direct ancestors in my Bertrand lineage going back 10 generations. So first of all, the Bertrand ancestor came as a soldier from France to Canada. And then from Ireland, we have all these names in red. Kelly, Cochran, Evans, McDaniel, Sadat, and Watson. The next one is Sashery. Now, my great-great-grandfather married a Sashery from Opelousas. And I found out that the Sashery name was probably probably created from one of the Sashri kinfolk, Vosheri. And then the next one, a Canadian fur trapper named Charles Rochon. He was the founder of Mobile, Alabama, or one of the four founders of Mobile, Alabama. And his wife, Henriette Colon, was half Indian. Then we have my entrepreneur ancestors. And that name comes from Andre Pons, Q-N-S. I've also seen it, Andre P-O-N-T. And so all of the entrepones come from one central root, so we're all related. The next ancestor is Contini, which is uh, from southern Italy. I have Doucette, which uh, has Mi'kmaq Indian ancestry. Then Fontenot. Uh, which is not a French name. It would be considered a Basque name. Uh, the Basque name for was Ituriate, which means by the fountain. So people in the olden days, they were named by where they lived or what they did. And so this family lived by the fountain of that uh, village. And for more information on the Basque, you can see this website, labasco.com. And Antoine Nicolas Gautier came here several years ago and gave us a talk on this topic. Next, we have Guillory and Montfort Guillory. Uh, all of the Guilleries are related because they come from this route. And then Ledoux and Rondeau. Uh, from Canada, they started the Ledoux clan here. Then we have all these names going back to the 1700s. Um, I'm not going to name them all, but you can read them. And plus, they're all in my book. Uh, the Oquan ancestor, um, right up here. Claude Oquan came on the ship um, Archangel. Uh, something the archangel and uh, uh, let's see you can look through those and also uh, this video will be posted on, on our YouTube channel all right now this I have it I broke it up into two so this is the pedigree photo chart of my dad and his uh, ancestors. So my dad is down here. All right, then his father was Charles Numar, his father was Stéogène, and his father was Auguste, and his wife Ernestine Satie. Théogène's wife was Marie Gaudrat Entrepont, and so on. Then here's a Pete, Hermina Charles Pete. I have a lot of Pete's in my ancestry. Then on my mama's side, dad's mama, she was a Ledoux. Uh, her father was a Ledoux, and her, uh, his wife was a Frutel, which is a German name. And then another Piet here. So we'll see a lot of Piets in my, in this. Uh, so, okay. Now, this is the picture on the left here. This is Auguste. 
Duclos Sale Bertrand and his wife Ernestine Citig. Now this is the oldest picture that I have um, of an ancestor. He was born in around, I think it was 1837, and he was in the Civil War. He was uh, wounded in the Battle of the Wilderness. That might be in Pennsylvania, I'm not quite sure. But he was wounded and disabled from his wound and then released to come back to his farm in Lotel. Um, his wife was um, Ernestine Sittig, and her, her father was Dominique Cantini Sittig. And he, was, he came from The Hague, Holland. He was born in 1800, and he uh, worked at uh, St. Landry Parish Government. I think he had a, a job in the, um, in the courthouse. And D.C. Satig, Dominic Contini Satig, he owned a cotton storage building in Washington, Louisiana, that we now know as the Steamboat Warehouse Restaurant. And so this is a picture, a comparison picture of my son Jeremy right here <coughs> with his great, great, great grandfather. Can you see a resemblance? Wow. So that got me thinking, uh, if, if there's so, that much resemblance between these generations, if you ever wondered what your ancestors look like, you can probably look at one of your close relatives and see that there may be a resemblance going back that far. Now, this is Auguste Bertrand's daughter, Marie, and her husband, Ernest Fuselake. Cute lady. Now, like I said, Auguste was in the uh, Civil War, and every unit had their own flag. Like, this here is the flag of the Opelousas Guards. And this is not mine, but this was a, this is a photo taken by a friend of mine, uh, and it's top secret who the flag belongs to, he wouldn't tell me. Um, but I was very fortunate that he took a picture of it and let me have it for my, uh, my presentations. Now, Auguste had, uh, these are two of Auguste's brothers. The one standing on the left is Homer, and his older brother is Louis Ozem. Homer was married to Honora, I don't know how to pronounce it, Honora Boone, and she was a descendant of either Daniel Boone or Daniel Boone's brother. So now we have uh, some genealogy genealogy descendant chart. So this is the oldest, as far back as I can go, is Pierre Gilles Bertrand, who came from France. <coughs> uh, and his son, Gilles Joseph, I think is the one who came as a soldier from, from, uh, from France. And they lived in the Montreal area. So we have Amable, Amable, and his wife, Anastasia Poquin, who's the daughter of Claude. Then Louis Bertrand lived in Lotel, married to a Ledoux. Auguste Bertrand, who we just covered. And then his son, Theogen, and then my grandfather, Charles Numat. So here's a descendant chart for Claude Pete. Does anybody have Pete ancestors? One, two. Okay, so here we have Claude Pete and Marie Como, Pierre Francois Sr., Marie Louise, Sidelis, Eugenie Ledoux, married my, uh, one of my ancestors. And here's Auguste again. And then here we have my, my dad's mama who was a Ledoux. This is 
their G uh, chart, uh, Pierre Ledoux, who married uh, Rondeau, Francois Ledoux, married a Rougeau, Ledoux married a Pete, Ledoux married my Bertrand ancestor, and so on. Another Pete uh, chart, Francois Pete Sr. And then my, uh, my Entrepont ancestor, Martin Entrepont, married Hermina Charles Pete. How about font nodes? Anybody have font nodes in the ancestor? No? I have a descendant chart for Jean Louis de Colin font note. And there's a lot of Pete and Entrepont's that descend from this, this man. His son, Philippe Fontenot, the Entrepont descendant Charles <coughs> came from Pedro or Pierre Entrepont, on down to my kinfolk down here. Joubert, we have Pierre Joubert who married a Pete. and ended up with uh, Martin Entrepont and Hermina Charles Peake. is another Peake descendant, and the ancestry changes as the children marry into different lines. Now here down at the bottom we have McDaniel, which is my Irish ancestry. Pierre Peake and Agatha Doucette, and we have more uh, <coughs> mishmash of different names. So the, the head of the Pete clan was Claude Pete, and I think he had five sons and a daughter, and all of those are in my ancestry. Uh, now we have Charles Vijay, <coughs> Catherine Cattoir, we have another Pete, Frutel. Now the Frutel is a German name, so I have a bit of German ancestry through, through them. So this is Gadrat Entrepont and her husband, Theogène, my great-great-grandfather. <coughs> he was one of Auguste's sons. <coughs> this is a photo on the left here. And this is an artist painting of them. <coughs> Her mother, Gadrat's mother, was Hermina Charles Pete, the mother of Gadrat. This is a, uh, I guess you'd call it a charcoal drawing that was on the wall of their home, which I took a picture of. And this is a photograph of her. Now, Gadrat and Gadrat and her husband, Theogen, had a bunch of kids, and these are some of their daughters. This is one of Ernestine when she was younger and when she was older. This is Alice, younger and older. Gadrat, the child of Gadrat, younger and older. They were pretty. Olivia, younger and older. And Olivia was a daughter of theirs, and she married Dr. Frederick Vidrine. I don't know if that name rings a bell to anybody. Yes. Okay, good. Dr. Fred was my great uncle. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Now, my grandmother, this is her sister, Belle Ledoux. And Belle was married to Ame. Uh, 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 Entrepont. And this is their son, Floyd. Has anybody ever heard of Andy's Fried Chicken? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andy comes from the name Entrepont. So I remember when I was a kid visiting their chicken farm, he had several huge metal buildings where they were raising chickens, and he had a poultry plant on. Uh, 
uh, Landry Street in Opelousas. And then after that, they started this uh, franchise business of uh, doing fried chicken. Jacques Nestor Entrepont, who my dad called Nantes Ness, because Nantes is <coughs> French for uncle. And he was called Ness because that's short for Nestor. And so this two pictures of him younger. This is him at my dad's uh, wedding in 1948, and his wife, um, Rita. Uh, and Rita is a sister, another sister of my grandmother, uh, Lenore Bertrand. Now, I was thinking about this. Uh, they called her, my daddy called her Tati. Now, how do nicknames get started? Well, I know, for example, my uncle, my mama's youngest brother, the siblings called him, well, they called him Balk. Now, what does Balk mean? Balk is baby talk because the parents, my grandparents, called the child Block, like a block, because he was chubby, <laughs> fat legs, fat arms, and they called him, what's I saying, Block? And so the little kids heard that, and so they picked up and said it the best they could, and they called him Balk. And he kept that name forever. Now, Rita, how did she get the name Tati? Well, my guess would be the, the little ch uh, small kids heard that name, Rita, and they picked up the Ta, and they got the added T to the end of it. And, okay, so we have Nestor, you know, he was called Ness, which is short for Nestor. Uh, this is Maman's, uh, the same woman that you saw at the wedding, wedding picture. Uh, this is a younger picture of Rita, and an older one taken at my Maman's house. Now, this is my grandfather, my dad's father, with his uh, first wife. This is her as a younger teenager. Uh, maybe 12-ish, 13. Really? Uh, because she got married, the wedding picture, she was 17. Uh, so this is their only child. Um, his name is Urban, and he had the nickname of Yoy, and I have no idea how he got that name, Yoy. That's my dad's parents, Numa on the left, and Lenore the Duke. This is my mama's childhood home. She was born in 1884, and uh, this was around the uh, Lawtail area of the country. And this is where my dad lived. Daddy was born in 1920, and this is where I lived. Uh, for the first three years of my life. We uh, had a little room, well, not a room, but like an apartment or something upstairs here. And my, my grandma, being that she was elderly, daddy wanted to stick around and, and help her as much as he could, so we lived upstairs. This is a one-room schoolhouse at Mallet, Louisiana, about 1905. And this schoolhouse is right next door to my, that house I just showed you where we live. And if you look down here, that's my, my dad's half-brother, Urban, who they call Yoy. And all of these kids, from the best that I can tell, were all related. They were all cousins or, or siblings. Now, this is my mama's parents here. Um, du Coudre Ledoux and uh, Frutel, I think. So, Marshall, yeah, Pauline Frutel. So this is mama's brother, Marshall Ledoux in World War I. Um, he is playing around. He is holding a, a bayonet to this guy's neck, and this guy's holding a bayonet to this guy's stomach. Getting around. 
Now, here's a milk ad from who knows when. Help make all babies as healthy as mine. <laughs> I was hoping that would get some giggles. So we have a little bitty boy, probably eight years old, with this sign around him, with this grown, big old huge man sucking on a bottle. Milk bottle, you know that <laughs> So what are some lessons that I've learned? Well, number one, don't wait too long to have the photographs that you have in your possession identified. My daddy was pretty good at identifying them and put the name on the back, but mama said, oh, I'm too tired, I'll do it later. And I, uh, every time we asked, oh, I'll do it later. And well, she passed away without identifying a whole bunch, dozens of photos. So identify the people in the photos. Number two, investigate your family history. I wish I would have asked my parents more questions about our family, our family heritage, and so on and so forth. And also, where did your ancestors live? Uh, it would be a, a dream come true if I could take some time and go to the courthouse and look up the records of where my ancestors lived and plot it on a, like a Google map so that I could see the whole uh, area of um, the, the Lotel, Forever Own, Mallet area where they lived. So you can get our books. I have a few, I have like eight or nine or ten books here that are paperback. But if you go to my website and go to the Amazon link, you can get the hardcover uh, directly from Amazon. The hardcovers sell for 40. The soft covers that I have here sell for 30. And that's it. Thank you all for coming and listening to me. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Any questions? ago my son downloaded um, Adobe Photoshop well uh, Adobe Photo Elements I think it's called mm -hmm. all right and there's probably a newer version um, and so plus there is um, so that was a, a photo editing program that you could enhance the pictures. That did a remarkable job in making these clearer. Um, so I had, well there's 400 pictures in the book. It's 225 pages I think, but anyway, you just scan one at a time and um, use the, uh, the software to enhance it to the best of your ability. And then when you go to name it, uh, since I have so many surnames, you put it in, the per you create a folder on your hard drive uh, for all of your surnames. So Bertrand, Ledoux, and so on and so forth. Have a, a, have a folder called Houses, which I included all the old buildings, uh, forms, uh, form buildings, barns, etc. So every major topic, I guess you could say, you create a folder on your hard drive so that when you save the picture, it'll go right into that, that folder. And that's the only way I knew to do it. And so I think it, it came out pretty good. Another question? Yeah, follow-up question to that. Did you add like metadata to it where it's searchable if you want to find like, <coughs> Papa Font knows 
house or something, you know? Description. Uh, description. Status Caption description or whatever. Metadata on, on your... I didn't know how to do metadata. Okay. Uh, all I knew to do was scan it, improve it, enhance it. How, where would the metadata be entered in at? Are you talking about a battery for the latitude, longitude? No, 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 no. In, in the, on the properties, when you're saving something, sometimes you can go into the properties and it's a drop down all the way to the right and you can put in there like uh, LeBlanc, comma, and list all the people in there and give a date and then it just saves it. So if you could do it, if you do a search for like Lily and LeBlanc, it'll come up and find that one picture that is identified in the metadata as Lily or LeBlanc. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to learn how to do that. Because after this um, project, well, I'm working on my dad's um, oil paintings. I collected, well, he did a bunch of oil, he did 50 oil paintings. And they were distributed between me and my sister, some of my kids, and my sister's kids. So I called for a roundup, let's bring all these pictures in. We uh, had them professionally photographed and digitized so that they could be in different sizes and put on different things. So I ended up with, I think, 53 images of Dad's paintings, which is going into a book called Cajun, uh, Cajun Country Landscapes, Bayous, Forms, and Flops. So that should be out within the next couple of months. Yes, sir? You know, everybody has cell phones these days, and they're, they're really nice and handy. <clears throat> There's a free program you can download called Photo Scan. And it's, it's, Photo what? It's scan. Photo Scan. 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 And then, you know, I can't tell the difference between that and scanning. I, can I consider it like a picture and a, a picture, and I can't tell that it's Okay, that's good to know. Thank what, you for that. What is your YouTube channel that you were talking about that this video is on? If you go to youtube.com and type in cookbook dude, all one word, cookbook dude, okay. and I'll upload it to that channel. Okay. So once you're there, you can look around at my other. <clears throat> Cut it. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, once you want you there. I have, I started out that channel uh, about 12, 13 years ago with cooking uh, videos because I uh, produced some cookbooks. And so I would do some, make a meal and video it and put it up on the YouTube channel. Any other questions? So we've got uh, some books here if y'all are interested. They're $30. Appreciate it. Thank y'all for coming. And while I still got Neil here, while we were talking about the pictures, uh, on Facebook there is a, I guess a page or a group, I forget the name of it, but it's ancestry related. And if you have an old kind of faded picture, there are volunteers that will enhance it and sometimes colorize your black and whites or, or just kind of um, take the dullness out of it and make it more like a photo taken today. Uh, They'll do it voluntarily, as long as you don't give them a hundred photos or anything, you know, you, you may have one particular photo you would like to enhance, then they'll do that. And another one, I, I've never really explored it, but you may have come across, it's called Dead Fred's Genealogy, or they have photos of, yes, unknown people. Uh, can anybody add to what, how Dead Fred works, or if you have any experience with it? No. So, has anybody come across it? No. It's kind of matches my different about his um, surnames earlier. He talked about the pictures going you know, with the folder and matching them. Uh, for me, it was a good idea, and I did. That's what I did. But the only problem is I only got about 15 Joseph Fox. Or, okay. So what I ended up doing was taking each name that I had to put in there, and I put the birthday, the year, and the death date on the end of that, and sealing every one of them. 
Oh, okay. That's how I can tell which, which generation they're in, you see? Right. And which one you want to look at, because in the older days, they duplicated a lot of names. Shows that. A lot of Pierre's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shows that. Pierre. It happens a little Show bit. Because you mind that you said, they only got about, I got about 50 of them in my number one line, you see? And that's how I do it with my, my I just put the birth year and the death year, and that way I know which one is separate from which family belongs to. Good idea. Thank you. Well, Neil. Yes, sir. As a token of our appreciation, we'd like to present you this for one year uh, membership for the year 2023. And Warren would like you to fill out this information so you can enter your entire database. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to have a motion to adjourn the meeting. A motion to adjourn the meeting. By Alan Moss, seconded by Hayden.